I had an interesting comment uh, come in speaking of YouTube. From one of the recent videos, there was a gentleman, something that I've seen Ernie do before, but in a different fashion. And I've never considered this. But a recent comment that came in on one of the videos on YouTube was a gentleman who was looking at a covered call rolling and adjusting position. So, for example, let's say some of the movements we saw over the week, you know, I had Annette as a married put. We're going to talk about that one probably a little bit later. I had that with an income method number one, meaning I had the married put in place, stock plus put combination with low risk, and I sold a call at 133. After the Powell comments, Annette jumped up to 139 breached 140 at one point during that that afternoon. I didn't roll the call for a specific reason. We'll talk about them when we get to it. But something that I've never done in my personal account, I've seen Ernie do, the gentleman that commented on YouTube, we'll take a look at his comment in a moment, but it's actually very intriguing to me. It's something I've never done in my own portfolio. Well, why I'm going this way is let's say that uh, the opposite happens. Or, or this happens, where I had a covered call on Annette that was out of the money to begin with. I wanted to hold the position long term, but that sudden gap occurred, and I had 300 or 400 shares of the position, or NEM even, Newmont Mining, which was trading at around $45, $46, gapped up to almost 49 almost 50 with the Powell comments, then pulled back slightly, and then moved back up again. But what the comment was, let's take a look at NEM. Let's use that as an example. And I'm just going to go to the stock research tool from my watch list on NEM. And we're just going to go back a couple of days here. So here's December 2nd. See, it ends at 48.67. Yesterday was the gap up to almost 49. I thought it went higher than this. I thought it did go above 49. Maybe I was mistaken. The previous day, it was just meandering around 47, 47 at the close. But I'm going to go to the previous open range. Okay, I have the 47 and a half call sold against the NEM married put position. That's why I'm using it as a stock. I know I've seen the performance. But anyway, let's take a look back to November 29th. And NEM here is trading at uh, 45.76. I should go back another day. Let's go back another day. There we go. Great. We're going to take it at 44.32 at the close on November 28th. And what we're going to do is go to the option chain. And here, this is a trial account. This is not my full account. It's just a trial account. But we go back to the option chain. When you're on your trial, you can go back a few days to see historical chains or even do basic historical back testing. But it only goes back a couple of months. But that's okay for our example. Let's go ahead and go back to November 28th for the option chain on Newmont Mining. Now, we'll use today's expiration. Let's say that we bought Newmont Mining on the 28th at 44.32. And I want a reasonable good return for four or five day trades. We're going to sell the weekly today's expiration 12.02. And we want a good premium, but we don't want to be too close to the money. Now, this is only a 0.4% time value. That's not going to cut it. Let's go with the 1%. Let's go with the 45. Now, I know it's close. It's only 62 cents out of the money, 68 cents or so out of the money. But we're going to get 42 cents for it, which is around 1% for four days, potentially. Now, let's enter that into the portfolio. So to enter a new position, we're going to go into the portfolios view. It's going to pull up the current last one we looked at. We were looking at a butterfly assignment test. Well, since I have no positions here, this example was closed at a 0.3% return. Let's enter our sample covered call into the portfolio. So I'm going to select a strategy. I'm going to go to covered call. And we're going to use NEM. And we're going to buy 400 shares. And we're going to put in our transaction date. We said 11.28, if I'm not mistaken. It's a Monday. And our price per share was 44.32. Closing prices, this is not an actual trade. And at the same time, we sold the just out of the money, 
45 call, four contracts for 42 cents, roughly 1% premium. And again, let's just change the date to 1128. Now, I want to stay in this position. I was hoping for a good 1% return. Didn't think Newmont Mining would hit the 45 strike price at expiration. Although if it did, I'd make it a good return of 2.5%. That 2.5% comes from what? It comes from that original 42 cent premium, around 1% or so, 0.9% premium collected against our purchase price. But if the stock was at 45, we'd make that additional 68 cents in appreciation times four contracts. So the max profit was 440. The 68 plus the 42 times four contracts. Yes, yes, that's that's where it is. Mm -hmm. And now the stock's at 4867. But I want to stay in the position. That means I have to roll it. That means I'm paying at least 370, 380, 390 sometime today to buy to close this December 2nd 45 call just due to the intrinsic value. And if I want to roll for a credit, I'm going to go have to go pretty far out in time. Now, this example might not work, but what the gentleman posted on YouTube is a comment on one of the covered call roll opportunities. As he said that in situations where the stock moves just above the short call strike price, maybe I should have used the 47.50 in this example, but that's okay. What he found that worked for him is that he would buy back all four calls. And this is going to be fairly, fairly expensive. So let's just simulate that. What would that cost? $1,470. And we did take in one sixty-eight, So really we're down about $1,300 in buyback cost. Well, what he had said is that he went out almost two or sometimes three years out in time. And he found an opportunity to roll for a credit, but with only half or one of the contracts. Here it's going to take two. So we're going to buy back all four contracts that we had sold that are now deep in the money. We're down that $1,300, but we're going to roll 413 days out in time, about a year, just with half of the contracts to create a credit. Or close to it. So we're yeah, we're gonna get about fourteen hundred dollars here. Now the original one sixty eight we collected plus the new fourteen oh five covers the fourteen seventy buyback cost. And what do we have? Two hundred shares that are still open without being capped. Now I can continue to go out one or two weeks out in time and sell only two contracts at 70 cents or even go to the 49.50 or maybe even the 49 at two contracts at a dollar and the idea here is not to just create a complex position but to sort of ladder the covered calls to where i'm rolling for a credit but with half the position and i'm still able to sell half the contract size against it every two weeks or month by month to continue to maximize the annualized return on the position. Now, what do I mean by maximize annualized return? We all know that it's best to sell premium week by week or month by month if possible because the option that is six months out in time is not six times the cost of the one month out option. It's a higher premium but it's not six times. This December 50 call, standard December expiration, 14 days away, is priced at 72 cents. Okay, good premium for 14 days out, even for an out of the money covered call. It's a little bit above 1.6, uh, 1.7% .6, for two weeks, pretty good. Now, 413 days out in time.
the same strike is priced at 703. That is 10 times the amount of premium that we could get by selling just two weeks out in time. However, if I'm able to get 72 cents every 14 days, I'm going to get a much higher return annualized or over time than selling a few calls that are out 413 days. What is 14? I'm sorry, what is 413 divided by 14? I always said that wrong, but I, I pretty much did. 413 divided by 14, that's 29.5. Which means I could technically get 72 cents, in theory, of course. <coughs> Excuse me. We could get that amount 29.5% of the time, or 29.5 times which would be more than just the 10 times over, not even 10 times actually over the difference between the two. But the idea is sound, in my opinion, because instead of having to say, oh, I've got to roll out six months, I've got to roll out seven months, I've got to roll out eight months for the whole premium to roll for a net credit to make up this $1,400, I'd need Ah, $3 premium for four contracts to roll for a credit. In this case, we rolled two. Yes, it's very far out in time, and that comes with its own complications. But we were able to roll essentially for a credit or close to it and still be able to manage shorter term with half of our position. Now, I'm going to clean this up later and do a better presentation, but I thought this was a really unique idea that I have never done in my portfolio before. I've seen Ernie do something very similar to this, but I really like the concept and I really like the idea, not just for standard covered call positions, but for things maybe such as calendar spreads. If you do a diagonal spread or a poor man's covered call and the stock suddenly gaps above your short strike price, and you have 10 contracts or six contracts, you might be able to roll half of those short calls six to eight months out in time to do the credit and still against the other three calls of the long option you bought to simulate stock ownership, keep it week by week or every two weeks out of time or month by month to keep maximizing the annualized return in that case on half or more of the position. It works the same way with married puts. I'm going to start considering this with my married put positions that have maybe 200, 300, or 400 shares rather than feeling I have to roll all three contracts or all four contracts of the married put position with the income method number one, a call sold against it, out in time to roll for a credit via income method number two in the blueprint. Maybe I just can roll two of them out to six or seven months and keep the other two shorter term to manage short term. Now, that adds complication, absolutely. That adds some complexity into rolling and adjusting a covered call position. But again, you still leave the potential for maximizing annualized return while being able to roll for a credit. Although the complication I mentioned is that when you use a farther out in time option, we know that this price, if the stock NEM just stays around 47, 48 or $49, even over the next 80, 90, 200 days, we're not going to see much time decay on these short calls. It's going to take us a while to be able to buy those back for the expected or reasonable profit we'd want to see on the premium of 75, 80, or 85%, or a large decrease of the stock, which we don't want with just the covered call position, even managed this way. But again, it's a way to roll partially for a good credit to cover the buyback cost while still being able to manage and maximize the annualized return selling shorter term over time instead of going the whole position one year out, 200 days out, six months out, seven months out, and waiting on those transactions, rolling half of them up to cover close to or all of the buyback cost and still keeping half the position or some of the position in the shorter term to maximize the annualized return. So I want to give a shout out in this case. You know, I don't, like, I don't use that term and I don't usually do this that much. And uh, let's just go here. I know the screen is paused for one second. Um, 
but this was a, a public YouTube comment that was from Michael. Michael S. Michael Sumner's there. I had 400 shares. I bought back and sold one to your elite for the same cost to buy back the four options. I left 300 shares free to continue to sell monthly. So I was intrigued by that. And I've seen Ernie do something similar again, but I looked at some examples from what Michael had mentioned and it has its benefits. I'm going to have a little bit more on that sometime down the line, but just wanted to give that little teaser presentation and another concept or idea to consider when rolling and adjusting your coverage. As you can see, this one came from a comment from a presentation rolling it deep in the money covered call at expiration. 